we are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending we are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending we are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending we are a circle so I think that earth-based spirituality, paganism, all the stuff we've been talking about has a great role to play in making that shift because I think that shift, though it is a very practical shift in the physical realities of how we live, to make that shift we have to make a deeper spiritual and emotional shift, a shift in what we value. And that shift is away from valuing stuff, away from seeing the world as a bunch of isolated things that interact, uh, and seeing our goal as human beings to acquire more and more of that stuff. It's a shift to seeing the world as alive, as an organism, something that we are all part of. And that what makes for real success, what makes for true abundance, what makes for uh, a good life and a happy life is not about stuff, but about relationships and the quality of our relationships. And that shift sounds pretty simple, um, but when you really start to look at it, it becomes very profound. It's a shift I think that science has been making since uh, the early part of the 20th century, actually, when scientists began looking, you know, they were looking deep into stuff. So they are looking for the simplest elementary particles of stuff and into the atoms, and then they discovered that an atom isn't actually a thing. You know, an atom is a set of probabilities that are affected by the observer. And then science began to go all wonky and mystical. But it's taken a lot of our scientists a great deal of time to catch up with that insight and to recognize that there is more to the world than the things that can actually be counted and measured uh, and touched and put into statistics. It's a shift that we make, you know, how many of you who garden are organic gardeners? All right. So when you're an organic gardener, you get a, a pest or a bug in your garden, you know, your first reaction is not, oh, let me go get a more powerful poison to kill it. Uh, your first reaction is, okay, something's out of balance in this system. How do I bring this all back into balance? Maybe the soil needs to be healthier. Maybe I need to bring in some predatory bug that can eat the bug that's eating my lettuce. Uh, maybe I need to interplant the lettuce with some other things that are going to distract the bugs or confuse the bugs. And so what you're talking about all the time, again, is looking even at your garden uh, as a set of relationships and really recognizing that what creates that health in your garden is uh, the richness and the diversity and the balance of those relationships. The other thing I realized after talking to that journalist, after I went home and kind of went, oh, ha, 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 New Yorkers, no wonder they're totally disconnected from nature. I had to stop and ask myself, how real is the environment to me? We were going off to blockade and uh, protect old growth forest. But really, when we were there, I remember asking one of my friends, uh, can you point out the old growth forest to me? Because I'm not sure I know like what over there in the landscape is the old. And, you know. and of course, I realized part of that is because there's so little old growth forest left. There's so little pristine environment that most of us have never actually had the experience of being in the kind of environment that our ancestors knew every day. I've been very fortunate, you know, and that many times I have been able, I live in California, I've been able to go out into areas of totally ancient, pristine redwoods that are thousands of years old. Um, many times in the, <laughs> most of the time, you know, in the process of somehow or other trying to stop them from being logged, right? 
Um, but here in Ohio, I think there's very, very little left of what the primeval hardwood forests or softwood forests would have looked like. Most of the country has been so changed and so altered in the past two, three hundred years uh, that we, we don't even get that experience of connecting with nature in its wildest and most pristine form unless we actually are lucky enough to go out to some wilderness area at some time and experience that. But I believe one of the most powerful things we can do, both spiritually and politically, is to actually develop our own deep relationship with the natural world and to make that part of our spiritual practice. And fortunately, to do that, you don't have to go out to the pristine redwoods. You don't have to find the primeval Ohio forests. Um, you can actually do that wherever you are. You can do it in your own backyard, you can do it in the middle of the city, um, because nature is everywhere. And nature, in fact, is us also as human beings. We are nature, we are not separate from nature, we're not some other order. So what I want to do this afternoon is not just talk at you. I'm going to come down and I want to lead you through... Uh, a little exercise that is my own spiritual practice, uh, which is really about connecting, putting ourselves in a state of consciousness where we can just be in the natural world and observe with an open mind, with our mind not being distracted by all that inner dialogue that runs all the time or all those things we're worried about or all those things we're supposed to do or those planes we didn't catch but just being able to be simply present in nature. And to recommend to y'all that, uh, how many of you have a daily spiritual practice you do? All right, you're quite an advanced crowd. <laughs> uh, that you might add to it, or if you don't, how many of you don't think you, you, think you might want to? <laughs> you know, that one of the things you can do is simply make your practice or make part of your practice being to spend some time each day in nature. Whether that's out in the primeval woods or whether that's in your backyard, or whether that's looking at what's growing out of the cracks in the pavement in the middle of a parking lot. There's always nature around. And just giving yourself some time each day, even if some days it's only like five minutes while you're waiting for the bus or you're waiting for your kids or whatever, you know, to really focus and be present is a way that lets you open up to the communication that the natural world is always doing. Because nature is always speaking to us. Everything in nature, everything in the world is constantly communicating on multiple levels, from the spiritual to the chemical. And if we start to open up our senses and to watch and to look and to listen, then we can start to hear that communication and when we can hear that communication, uh, we start to be a lot wiser in how we intervene when we connect with the natural world.